turn to that fiery farewell from Congresswoman Katie Hill. In the face of an ethics investigation into her relationship with the staffer, the California Democrat is resigning today with a blast at what she calls a double standard in Washington. Lindsay Davis is here with the story. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, George. Hill's last speech to the House was all at once a heartfelt apology, a solemn promise to fight the cyber exploitation of women, and a fiery rebuke of the double standards faced by female versus male public officials. Her overriding message, while she is stepping down, she will not be silenced. Without Democratic sense. Representative Katie Hill, once a rising star in the Democratic Party, addressing the floor of the House in an emotional final speech after giving up her congressional seat amid an ethics scandal, apologizing to her supporters, but also exposing what she calls a double standard. I wanted to show young people, queer people, working people, imperfect people, that they belong here because this is the people's house. I fell short of that, and I'm sorry. The 32-year-old's resignation comes less than a year after she took office. Amid allegations, she engaged in an improper relationship with one of her congressional staffers, which House rules uh, forbid. You know, Rumors of the allegations began as years, nude photos of Hill were leaked online. Hill, who was in the midst of a nasty divorce, has accused her husband, Kenny Heslop, of leaking the photos in an act of revenge porn. Heslop hasn't commented publicly, but his father tells ABC News as far as he knows, his son had no role in distributing the photos. His father also spoke to BuzzFeed News, telling the outlet that his son claimed his computer was hacked shortly before the photos were published online. I no longer want to be used as a bargaining chip. I'm leaving because I didn't want to be peddled by papers and blogs and websites used by shameless operatives for the dirtiest gutter politics that I've ever seen. While Hill denies engaging in an improper affair while in Congress, she does admit to a sexual relationship with a campaign staffer before being sworn into office. She says in part she's leaving because of a deep abuse of power and a double standard in Washington. We have an entire culture that has to change, and we see it in stark clarity today. The forces of revenge by a bitter, jealous man, cyber exploitation and sexual shaming have combined to push a young woman out of power and say that she doesn't belong here. Hill has since vowed to battle revenge porn and recently hired powerhouse New York attorney Carrie Goldberg, the revenge porn warrior, to determine who should be prosecuted for the published photos. In her last act in Congress, she voted to move forward on the impeachment inquiry of President Trump. So the fight goes on to create the change that every woman and girl in this country deserves. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said that she's sad Hill is leaving and praised her as an outstanding young public servant. Pelosi also added it's shameful that she's been exposed to public humiliation by way of cyber exploitation. And she went on to caution everyone that they may also be subjected to that. So to be careful. George. Okay, Lindsay, thanks very much. Let's bring in our senior legal analyst, Sunny Hostin, for more on this. So we just saw the con former congresswoman uh, hires a lawyer, wants legal recourse against those who leaked the pictures. Does she have options? She does have some options. I mean, 46 states and D.C., they have uh, banned this sort of revenge uh, porn. And but the, but the problem is, who do you prosecute? Do you prosecute the person that uploaded it? Do you prosecute uh, the companies that published it, like Red State, like Daily Mail? I mean, how do you prosecute a publication? So that's more of a civil penalty. And then how do you go about it? Where was it uploaded? When did she find out about it? Because there's no federal revenge porn law. They've, there have been efforts to pass that, but it doesn't exist. So there's this patchwork of uh, state laws, and that's a little bit difficult. The law is often very slow to catch up with technology, unfortunately. And adding to the difficulty in this, it's really now a case of he said, she said between Hill and her husband. How difficult does that make this to prove? I, I think it's it's uh, not as difficult as some people think because, again, there's sort of a tech technology trail, so to speak. But her husband's father is saying, no, he didn't upload it. He's saying that his computer was hacked, which is often the defense here. But I think that part of it is, is rather it's going to be a little easier than people think. Mm. What about the bigger issue of whether um, Katie Hill is a victim of a double standard in Washington? Yeah, I mean, I think there are two different issues. There's sort of the revenge porn issue, which mm -hmm. I think we can all agree is wrong. You just don't do that. If there's this, you know, picture taken, you don't just disseminate it to the public, a picture that was taken privately, whether consensual or non-consensual, consensually taken. And there's then there's the issue of having 
a consensual relationship with someone when you were running for public office or a relationship with someone while you were in office. Mm -hmm. So I, I think those are two separate issues. Yeah, and those questions about resignation and when, when people decide to leave office, they're political in the end, not legal. Exactly, exactly, I think. Okay, so yeah, so <laughs> thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.